Uh, now, the other thing I want to draw your attention to is that notice the way it's laid out. There, there's giant gaps in the table. Now, look at the gap in, in uh, period one. Remember, period is a row. So, period one, you've got hydrogen and then you've got helium, and there's a giant gap in the middle. Um, notice if you go down to period two, there's, there's a couple elements and there's a giant gap and then there's more elements over there uh, on the right-hand side. And the same sort of thing happens until you get down into the body of the table, then you start having the table filled up with all of your nice metals like zinc and copper and the heavy elements down there. But there are these gaps in the table. I guess what I want to tell you right now is, is don't worry too much about the gaps. It's just drawn that way because that's the way nature is. We could have organized it a million different ways, but doing it this way allows the properties to come out and show. Remember how I, uh, and that goes into the theory of chemicals and elements that we don't want to get into right now, but that just trust me that that's the reason why. Remember back to a minute ago when I told you that the noble gases are in the right hand, the rightmost group, uh, the vertical group on the right hand side. The vertical column on the right hand side is all what we call noble gases. And I also told you that none of those gases react. Well, that's a shared property. So the, the argon, the krypton, the xenon, xenon uh, neon, and the other guys listed there, uh, those are in the same group. So they share similar properties. One of those properties is they don't react. So if we were to write the table in a different way and just kind of go and make a table of, of values, and just list them. Yeah, we could we could put them in order of atomic number, but but it wouldn't bring out the shared property. So putting doing it this way, scientists have have uh, have arranged it so that these vertical groups share similar properties among the elements, which is really really important. But the artifact to that is that it's it's kind of like an odd looking table. It has this hole in the middle, and that kind of thing. The other thing is if you look down to period six and seven down there at the, near the bottom of the table, there's a little gap drawn with like. Uh, two extra really long rows uh, there that are that are kind of wedged in there. The top one is called the uh, lanthanide series, and then there's also the uh, actinide series. And those are just uh, again, there you we could have drawn the table with those guys wedged in there, but then it would have spread out the table even more, so it wouldn't really fit in a book really well, and it would just kind of make it even more gnarly than it already looks with kind of holes and pockets everywhere. So the only reason that those are separate down at the bottom, it's not because they're really special too much. It's not really because they're this amazing set of chemical you know, elements that we kind of separate. It's just mainly because we don't want to spread those two uh, uh, periods out and kind of create these gaps in all the other periods, basically more than what we've already got. So that's about it for the periodic table. It's a uh, basically going to be your best friend on your exams and uh, you need to know how to, how to get around it. We're going to learn a lot more about it as we go through it and you'll get comfortable with it as you start using it on a daily basis to do your problems. But most important thing is to realize that you've got your chemical element uh, uh, symbol, you've got the atomic mass above it, and you've got the atomic, uh, I'm sorry, you've got the atomic number above it and you've got the atomic mass below it. And those are the main things you need to know. Then we've got the metals on the left of the zigzag line. You've got your non-metals on the right of the zigzag line. You've got your uh, metalloids that are around the zigzag line, kind of in the transition region there. In the far right-hand column, you've got your noble gases, which are like your perfect gases. And they just basically don't want to react with anybody. And I'll just give you a preview. The reason they don't want to react is because their electrons are all filled up nicely and neatly in all of the little orbits and none of those electrons want to do anything. They don't want to go join anybody else and they don't want anybody else to come to the party. They're perfectly organized in their, in their orbits. And so basically the uh, chemical reactions typically happen because the electrons want to move around and jump around from element to element and form new things. But for those noble gases, those electrons are perfectly happy because they're already filled in their nice neat orbits and, and we'll get into it later. But basically, that's the reason why they don't want to move around. So they don't really react with anybody. You could try to burn argon if you wanted, but nothing's going to happen. Uh, I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com. I hope this section has um, given you a little bit of an overview to the periodic table. We'll continue to learn more about it, and we'll definitely be using it in uh, every section from here on out.